Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf. Today, I have a really great video for you guys where I actually got on a call with Josh from Overthrow Disc Golf. This is a coaching session that I paid for because I'm in the final stages of figuring out a lot of stuff about my form. So we're gonna cover a little bit about grip and spin. We're gonna talk about using the off arm correctly or how not to use it correctly because it's been hurting me. We're gonna talk about a little bit of a dip in my form and getting my elbow up as well as a couple other things that I just think would be helpful that I wanted to share in this video with you guys. And honestly, after this session, I went out to a field and threw my farthest shots ever. They were with some pretty nice new discs. Destroyers actually, not Graces. Sorry, everybody. The full coaching session, which includes some parts that are really helpful, but not really important to this conversation that we're going to have today. It's posted over on my Patreon, the sponsor circle, which you can join, link down in the description. But we're going to go throughout this whole session. I'll overlay a lot of form and we'll just talk with Josh about some of the next steps in getting my form from having a solid base to the next level. And I think there's still a couple more to come, hopefully, that we can figure out over the next five or six weeks before I start my tournament season. Let's say hi to Josh and get started with this form session. I got five weeks left at this point, five or six weeks before I start playing tournament. There are a couple of just things that like I just cannot get right. I don't know why, but for some reason my grip went to that. And so I was very like just putting pressure right in the middle here. And so I've been trying to focus on this much more of a grip. So it's a little more front loaded, not like mm. super squeezing or anything. I'm also still like muscling and pulling a little too much. I noticed that consistently. And the off arm is something I was that's been big that like I, I'm not focusing on it to like add power. But it what I notice is my off arm consistently, it always comes in like this. And I actually looked at form from April of last year, which was like two months into playing, and it was already kind of doing this thing. I noticed that when it comes through, it pushes everything down instead of just letting it come down and just like hang out and not do anything. Because when it comes through, it's forcing everything like forward. And because I'm not like I haven't fully come through, it's forcing everything down as well. So I throw it into the ground a little bit more. The grip being like this isn't necessarily an issue where the pressure's at. Like if you're pulling this thing all the way back with your pinky, then whatever. But that just mess with that. I, I think the grip probably won't be as much of an issue as you think. So for the grip issue, I actually found something that I think is going to work a little bit better for me. I'm messing around with it and my forearm is actually a little sore, but this is the grip that I was using to help myself throw nose down that one day that I was like over 400 a little bit. It's actually something I saw in a Will Schuster clinic that Honestly, since my thumb was coming out into the middle here so much, the pressure was really right here, kind of closer to my pinky, just like Josh was saying not to do. You want your thumb, ideally, I think, to be right along the rim here so you can put pressure between your pointer finger and your thumb. That way you can kind of spin it off the front of the disc. I was watching a Will Schuster clinic though, and he was talking about his grip is a little unconventional. And I'm going to try it for a little bit, maybe just to help myself get back to feeling a front loaded grip and then just be more comfortable with this because this is pretty simple. Honestly, it's basically the prototypical grip. You got your thumb right there. You got it right between pinching these fingers right here. And then you don't want these to be flat because then you might hurt some tendons. But what he was doing is he said he put it right at the heel of his palm, right up to this point underneath his index finger right here, not actually above underneath the index finger. He curls these fingers down. And then since it's down there, this finger is a little bit looser on there, but it really front loads the grip. It forces you to front load it. I'm feeling a little bit of strain in my form, which you don't necessarily want, but I think it's just new muscles that I haven't really used much. So something that might be worth trying for you. It's something that I'm messing around with, uh, but maybe not the best grip in the world. Who knows? All I know is Will Schuster is a lot better than me. <laughs> I think the biggest issue with your form is something that you've alluded to is one, let me say that uh, the timing looks better when you worked with Yanni to make sure the full plant happened before the, the swing. It's mostly looking better there because I was really focused. That's the main thing I was focusing on yesterday. Mm -hmm. It normally is still a little bit off. Um, the biggest thing that's lacking is a nice extension. Everything mm -hmm. when you throw is like your arms, you're short arming it a good bit, I mm -hmm. think. And that's because you're trying to throw out to that like 10 o'clock release. So you, like, you know, the release is supposed to come over here um, and not like in front of you, but this back arm is rotating everything forward. Like you said, which now yeah. you have shorter. If you rotate this forward, now you have that kind of shorter lever. So getting that back arm to, instead of rotate things forward, that collapse slides this elbow forward and it doesn't cause the shoulders to open up. You're just opening too much. And I think it's tied to trying to get this left shoulder. Obviously, your right, your right foot timing is good. But after you hit, like when you're bringing this in, 
it's rotating as well. I, I kept telling myself, because you guys had kept saying, like, don't worry about the off arm. But I also, like, I need to make sure that it's not killing, like, all the rotation that can happen right. from the brace or all, like, the weight movements. Like, I agree. It's not important for, like, adding power. Like, I'm not trying to use it to add power, but it's, like, hindering what I can do. So that's really what I'm focused on. Right. Yeah, it can't be hurting you. Like, you, if it's hurting mm-hmm. you, you have, to, you have to start looking at it. First, I think, have you been doing uh, any, like, one-leg drills? I haven't yet. I've I don't, no. I've mostly just been in a field throwing and like I watch every single rep and I like take notes from every rep and then throw. Mm-hmm. But I have not been doing a lot of shadow swings or one leg. I haven't been doing a lot of drills because I haven't known which drills are the right ones for the problems right. that I'm needing to fix. Yeah, first on the extension, um, just to yeah. get into the position we're already planted on the right, the backs down here hanging, and, and like you can just go from here and try to keep your chest this way, and like absolutely get after it. And if you want, you can do the old, uh, P McB practice hand in the pocket, or even like for me, I have to like grip this sucker. So this one here, and you can throw like straight up from here. It's just getting full extension. Yeah. How should I, how, how should I be focusing on coil? Should I not think about that too much or just like try to keep my yeah, spine but, neutral? Yeah. Don't worry about coil too much with this back okay. leg counterbalancing yeah. here like if you try yeah. to coil too much you'd you'd lose it yeah i think so. keeping this off arm on the outside of my body is going to be like the key for me because even when it comes in it still brings everything forward too much it's almost like once it comes in we start like opening up the chest and so it's yeah like you almost think about spraying the packs or like pinching the shoulder blades so the other kind of cue i think is when you're coming through and you're having this plant this whole left side like drops into the plant mm-hmm yeah right, so you kind of i know yanni talks about like resisting that front leg this is this is one of the things that i'm excited to talk about because i have i've heard a bunch of things and i've still not like had something click with me about getting this to drop without intentionally like forcing it down which i know is not the right movement like when you slide on carpet mm-hmm. like you're stopping there and this you don't even think about like your left side um necessarily but if you do think about it Post, mm-hmm. post fact, when you go to slide, you'll feel like this drop here. Okay. Right? You can feel your left side dropping. I think one of the bigger hindrances for me with that is the is just what my off arm does. Because instead of it being an inactive thing that I'm not supposed to worry about, it is an active thing that I right. don't worry about. One of, one of my questions with that too is, I've noticed that when, when I'm on a side view, my knees tend to... So I've actually started... One of the things I did yesterday was I noticed that I would still over-rotate backwards when I plant, when I do my so step. When this step is more parallel, I still notice that I over-rotate a little bit this way, even when I come, come through straight. And so I've started putting this step here a little bit more at like 30 to 45 degrees, so that mm-hmm. when I have my rotation, this X step is straight, so I can go right. very much heel to toe. And I think yeah. that's one thing that can help because I've noticed that when I'm like this, my knee back here, this knee tends to, even though this knee is this way, this knee still tends to be that way as well. But I've noticed that all the pros that I've looked at, their knees kind of converge on one another. So that, mm-hmm. And like that is a, like, this is more tense right here. So that when they come through, this knee drops and mine doesn't drop. It just kind of gets straight. And then like maybe towards the end, it kind of kicks in. Mine, I, mine don't tend to do that. And that might be because I'm opening up too early. But I'm not, that's one of the things that I don't know if I should intentionally think about that. I just noticed that that's a difference between my form and pro form. Right. Okay. So a few things here. There are three things. Don't let me forget that there are three things. First thing, okay. when you slide like this, your knee is going to bend in. This foot resisting has this hip higher than this hip. So yeah. when that happens, it's going to bend. If you're walking over like a log or something, your hands are opposite each other, Right. And if you start losing balance this way, this hand's going to drop and this hand's going to go up. And if it's this way, then it's they're going to counter each other. The difference is, is that we're side on like this. So instead of hand in hand, it's hand and foot. If you're rotating and your arm is throwing forward in front of you, your foot's going to come back behind you like this. Mm. Right? Because it's going to counterbalance you. If you're throwing out this way, this foot's going to stay back behind you on the opposite yeah. side of the box clock face right so your over rotation with the upper body is going to make it impossible for your foot to go to the right place the question yeah, that makes so much sense how do you not over rotate with the upper body for you if it's more active you might need to do the fall thing like the whole run up 
and actually just have the left arm here do your hit and then actually try to pull maybe even like pull your pants the other way right and just try right. to counter rotate this arm into the hit to keep it closed mm -hmm. that was the three things yeah i wanted to okay. talk about the knee naturally bending as a result of the brace and then balance nature of the arm and the foot and then uh like rotating the arm back it's a process, you know, it's going to take a while and it does take a while, but it also like, I mean, it's obviously happening. It's obviously been working. Like my form looks so different than it a bunch of months ago for my elbow. I feel like I'm not getting it out enough all the time. Like, and especially with that dip, like, I don't exactly know like what's happening or how to correct that. Cause I, I'm constantly thinking about, okay, let's not do that. Should I just like try to truncate my, my coil and like make it not that far? Because I think one of the things that happens is when I'm coiling and getting that disc in that tipped position, like everything will be good. I'll step through. And then as I coil back, like it's good. And then because I want to continue coiling at some point, I can't coil more. So the disc has to tip up to like reach back mm -hmm. further. And then when that happens, then my elbow comes into this slot instead of staying wide at that position. I don't know if that's something that will like start to crack itself as I work on my left arm or what, but it's just something that I've noticed that uh, this is something that Gannon Burr has like talked about my form a little bit is I'll come across a little bit too flat or too in where I could come across either a little more Anheuser or just like not having tipped the disc so that it doesn't dip under my elbow. Like I want my elbow to be above my mm -hmm. wrist the whole time on my throw so they can whip out better. Yeah, maybe just try keeping the disc or keeping the arm bent. Yeah, you don't need a full extension of the arm, that's for sure. Um, yeah. as long as the, shoulder, the shoulders coiling is what gives the distance. So mm -hmm. this is not as good distance potential as this, mm -hmm. even though my arm's still here. Huh. Is that like why the, like Emerson Keith can throw pretty far, but he is very bad the whole time because he just gets yeah, his yeah. shoulders back. Yeah. Okay. Cause it doesn't that makes sense. I've never understood that. That makes sense. Okay. It's all shoulders. It's all uh twist. Should I be like mostly throwing mids and putters or should I be throwing fairways and drivers or doesn't matter doesn't matter i don't think um unless you're looking specifically at like nose angle then throw the faster stuff i think nose angle is something that i need to work on a little bit but i think it'll honestly be corrected as i correct my grip because with my thumb right in the middle there it's so hard for the nose to get down but with the thumb higher it's just it just makes more sense so that's something that i think working on that a little bit has helped my nose angle a bit second is how do I not sky the disc when i let my left side drop because that tends to be my miss is i tend to like when i do that i'll just I'll like, th I'll throw a low to high then. I, I'm wondering if that's because I am coiling very much down up instead of just like with this neutral spine, but that's just a quick one as well. Right. Wherever you send your arm out like this, wherever this motion happens directionally is where the disc is going to go. So I could be over like this and I can have a swing like this, but if I get in here, I go out and then finish up super high. This is where it's going to, this is the level mm -hmm. that to go staying over the shot height adjustments are basically at the hit if you do this hit the same every time if you hit like this it would go higher yeah lower okay that makes sense yeah just working on the hit is gonna be helpful then all right, I'm going to be honest. After this coaching session, I went and I've basically been doing field work every day. There were a couple days that I wasn't able to because I had to film videos and it was freezing. Also, field work in the cold sucks because you feel like you're throwing so short, mostly because you are. I've already showed you that form a little bit from right after my coaching session, but I want to break it down real fast because everything looks a lot cleaner. I think there's still a problem with my elbow dip, but I'm able to get my X step into a more parallel position and then stride forward instead of out as much. There's still a little bit of a stagger. There's still a little bit of a window like Joel Freeman talks about, but not a lot of a window because I'm not over staggered. And then my, I wait for my heel to hit before the pull starts to initiate. There is a problem here though. I think I'm still muscling the disc. I'm still pulling a little bit too much instead of letting the disc snap out. And this is actually something that I've worked on a little bit more in a different session that I changed the way that I held the disc and held my off arm. And I'll show you a couple throws from that here as well. But back to that first one, when that disc does come through, my off side does dip down, which is really good. I'm not really actively pushing for that to happen. I'm actively making sure right now that my off arm doesn't interfere with my throw like it has been, but I don't really want to add power. Maybe that 
that's something that a lot of the really big power players do. But first off, I don't necessarily need to be a big power player. I just want to be a really good golfer, throwing hopefully 450 to 500, maybe a little bit more. And maybe I need that off arm power to get to that point, but I'm going to do everything that I can up until that, because I think that's a much more advanced technique if it even does anything at all. But then when I throw, my brace is honestly able to be pretty good because my foot is ahead of my head and the throw. I'm not throwing past my brace, so I'm able to collect all that momentum. And the biggest thing is my hips stay low to high. That's honestly something that as I have been figuring out a little bit more field work, I'm still trying to work on getting those hips low to high. And I think a little bit of it is that counterbalance. I'm still a little too staggered on some more recent field work that I've been doing, but this is all a process, like I said a little bit earlier. And the more I'm able to figure it out, the more I'm able to get to a field and throw good throws or better throws, the better the form will get over time. And then not only on the field, but also on the course, which is what I'm about to go and head out and do. Real quick though, here are some of my bigger throws. I had a day where I went out and was consistently over 400 feet with my distance drivers, which I was very happy with. A couple throws, maybe slightly downhill, were in the 470s to 480s, which felt super good. But here, I was really trying to make sure that my body was getting my arm into this position and then I was able to throw out. So I was letting it be much more of a tip of the whip and just letting it whip the disc instead of me trying to actively muscle and throw it, which is something that I'm trying to figure out what the right ratio of telling myself to throw it, telling myself to tip, to whip the tip, telling myself to do that. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the right ratio is for me in that. I appreciate you guys coming along for the journey. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that would mean a lot. A lot of my actual field work, like just straight up sessions that I do and talk through them a little bit are going to go over onto Bedanza's Bogies, my second channel, which you can find linked in the description or right up here. Go ahead and subscribe to that. I'm trying to get that one to a thousand subscribers by the end of April, hopefully get it monetized as well. I'll be posting a decent bit more over there uh, as I'm able to kind of have a pretty solid editing and shooting workflow here. If you want to check out my last Project 100 video, check that out right down here. Otherwise, there's a lot more to come and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. That's all. Okay. Love you. Peace. Peace.